Hey y'all, I'm Ajay and welcome back to my channel. So today we are in my kitchen and we are about to do some flower arrangements. Boom, bam. So I've had this channel for years and I think throughout the years a lot has changed. I've changed. I really want to do a get to know me video for you guys because I feel like we've all evolved. We've grown with one another. And for those of you who's been on this channel since the very beginning, like 20, what, 2015? Hey boo, thank you so much for still rocking with me. And then for those of you who are new, I think it'll be a great time to just introduce myself and to let you guys know who I am and what I'm all about. So I got a list of questions that I'm gonna be answering that let you guys get to know a little bit more about me while I'm also gonna be doing a floral arrangement. Watching people do them is so calming and peaceful. And so I know we're gonna have a good time today. I know it's gonna be relaxing, it's gonna be soothing, it's gonna be a lot of fun. So without further ado, y'all, let's get into the video. Let's get into it. This is definitely throwing it back to like the beginning of YouTube days where people used to do like get to know me tags and all that. Like that was just the peak YouTube time. And I feel like we've kind of gotten away from that. So, all right. The flowers that I'm going to be using today in this video are the pink roses. And this flower right here, y'all, if I don't know what a flower is called, I normally call it hydrangeas. Like, it doesn't matter what the flower is, I'm gonna call it a hydrangea because I don't know what it's called. But this legit is a hydrangea. The next thing we have is one of my little favorite flowers. They have like quite a bit of a smell, honestly. Like, some people love the smell of baby breasts, but they are strong. But yeah, we do have some baby breasts today that we're gonna be mixing in i thought it'd be cool to have the hydrangeas like kind of fill it up in between the roses and then throw in some baby breath to kind of like add to that spring look because that's why i went with the pink flowers i was going to do red because red is just such a symbolization of love and but i was like you know what we're young we're free let's just do pink let's do pink and like for the springtime, something nice and fresh. Let me grab my scissors and let's cut these things open. But yeah, I had to ask the girl behind the desk like, hey, I don't see any baby breath. Do y'all have baby breath? And they brought some out from the back and I was like, okay. And then like a cute little like couple, they were like an older couple. He was like buying flowers for his wife that was with him. He was like, where'd you get those? I was like, my baby He was like, yeah. I was like, oh, just ask behind the counter, behind the counter. I got you, I got you. So I thought that was really cute. Pretty, oh my gosh, so pretty. Roses are probably my favorite flower, but I love tulips. They didn't have, they did have tulips, but I just didn't like the way they looked. I love pink tulips. So yeah. So before I start cutting and chopping on these, I'm gonna just go ahead and fill my vase up with water as well as add in the food. And I've seen some people add ice. What does the ice do? Let me know if you know what the ice does. I probably should have actually put the, the food in there first, but it's really gonna have to be okay. And if you're someone who is a professional flower maker, flower arranger, please don't come for me. Stir it up with the stem of this. <laughs> All that nutrients, girl. Get into that. Eat it, up, girl. Eat it. Up. So let's get into the first question. What are you passionate about? So, okay, I'm gonna cut. Maybe let's see how tall this is. Um, and they always say cut at a slant, so that's what I'm gonna do. Huh, I think that's okay. Okay, back to the question. What am I most passionate about? I feel like I'm passionate about so many different things to the point of where I started getting confused and I had to ask God like, God, why am I good at everything? No, but you know how you have so many different things that you're good at um, to where you just feel like you have to choose? That's, that's how I feel, honestly. Oh, I've seen people do the thing where they open up the rows. Should I do that? I ain't gonna lie, I'm on a little time crunch, so. Ooh, maybe open it up just a little bit. I am very passionate about helping young women 
um, young girls and young women. I've been that way ever since I was a little girl. Um, my father, well this is getting deep, but if you're used to this channel then you know things get deep pretty fast. Um, but my father was in prison like my entire life and through that I remember being like a young girl, I'm talking like middle school, and like writing in my journal like one day I want to help young girls who fathers were are incarcerated because there's a lot of emotional baggage that comes with that that I don't think people even can begin to realize and it's not the child's fault because the the you know the father made certain decisions you know what I'm gonna cut the stem off yeah I'm gonna take the stem off and because of that I wanted to help young girls from a very very young age and it's crazy because most of my life when it came to other girls I always kind of felt like different and always kind of felt like left out in a sense and so it was from the beginning the enemy tried to make me feel like I couldn't relate to anyone or you know I couldn't have solid friendships and all that because growing up I had friends I had plenty of friends but that feeling always lingered in me of just like feeling like you know I'm never going to be able to fit in. But that was literally a lie from the enemy. Um, yeah, I think it, it looks better when I cut, take the stems off. Or the leaves off. What do y'all think? Cut this one a little bit more. Okay. Um, so I know that's something that I'm very passionate about. And there's so many different ways and avenues that I can do that, you know, that I can help young girls and young women. So that's what I'm really passionate about, right? I love encouraging y'all. I love giving y'all hope. Um, it's like, I feel like I, I am anointed to do that. Like, I'm anointed to encourage people. I'm anointed to give people hope. I'm anointed to make people feel like, you know, they're not by themselves. Like, I'm very much so intuitive in that aspect and very sensitive in that aspect of where I'm just if, if you're having a conversation with me I'm like locked locked in with you right especially if you're telling me something like that you're struggling with I'm like here and I can't help but to be that way and I feel like over time like people have when people meet like genuine people they don't know how to take that and they think it's fake and it's really not fake. Like I genuinely be caring about what people be going through and I be like wanting to listen and understand that's just who I am. So yeah, I'm definitely passionate about, you know, helping young women and helping young girls. Like that's something that I take to heart and that I know I can do that through so many different avenues, whether it's through, you know, one day, I don't know if you guys know this, but one day I want to produce my own films. And oh, you guys do know this because I posted my short film up here, duh. Um, so whatever avenue God wants me to do that with, I, that's how I'm going to do it, right? So however God wants me to help people, whether it's through films, whether it's through uh, preaching, whether it's through these YouTube videos, TikTok, whatever, that's what I'm going to do. So yeah, that's what I'm passionate about. Um, can I go to the second question? Do you have a dream job? Absolutely. I am one of those people who I've always known what I wanted to do ever since I was a little girl. Um... I know some people really struggle with like their purpose and their identity and all of that and I and you know I get that like but that's literally an area where I've never struggled with I've never not necessarily the identity part but I've never struggled with purpose like I've never struggled with I don't know what I want to do with my life um now I may have struggled with how do I get to where I'm trying to go like I know where I want to go but how do I get there I struggle with the journey and the process but I've never struggled with I don't know what I want to do I've always known what I want to do I've, I've known this ever since I was like a baby so let's get into the actual question I told you guys with me things get deep so quickly okay I have to answer every question with thought behind it I genuinely want you guys to get to know me but the question is do you have a dream job and yes my dream job is to have my own production company one day I would love to absolutely give more opportunity to minorities uh, especially black women and but also give a voice to other other groups as well for me dark-skinned women is like 
my target group. I've always wanted more representation um, for us. I know growing up, I would oftentimes like see on TV, there would be some representation, but sometimes that representation was met with like a lot of like stereotypes and different things like that. And I think it's okay to betray dark skinned women in a light that is beautiful and feminine and all of that. I think sometimes when we portray dark skinned women, it's always women who are mean, catty, you know, super, super fierce. And not saying we can't be that because we're human beings, we're very complex. But at the same time, I think it's also a good way to shine light on our other aspects, right? The femininity, the beauty, all of that. That is what makes us who we are. And so in film, I didn't see that a lot. You know, I always saw us in one light and in one way. And I grew up in the era of where people made dark skinned people feel like we were living in the Jim Crow times, honey. Had us thinking we was segregated, honey. Um, that's the era I grew up in. And that was like the 2010s where it was this dark skin versus light skin debate. Um, not saying that that wasn't always the case before, because it definitely was, but like the 2010s, there would literally be videos and tweets about dark skin versus light skin and all that crazy stuff. So, child, and so when 2017 came around and people started calling me the chocolate melanin queen, could you believe the confusion on my face? I was like, chocolate melanin queen? You just bullied me for six years. You just bullied me since elementary school. Oh, I always thought you were so beautiful. Did you? Did you? Bro, you bullied me. <laughs> so, yeah. That's what I want to do with my voice. I want to um, definitely give more opportunities to women who look like me. For sure, for sure. Okay, so this is the last rose. This is the last one. So, I love this vase because it's small. At the top, it's big and full, and then it gets small, so I feel like I don't necessarily have to like add a little tape to try to keep them together. I think it's going to stay very beautifully. So I wanted to put in my roses first and then now I'm going to add in my hydrangeas and my baby breath throughout and then go back in and really fluff out my roses. Next question. What's your favorite way to unwind after a long day? Mm, 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 mm. Don't I have many of those these days? First. Slipping into my silk pajamas, doing my skincare, getting into bed, ordering Uber Eats, and then turning on my favorite show. That is my favorite way to unwind after a long day, okay? Nothing beats it. It's the most comfortable, like, calm, just calm down, just calm down. Hydrangea girl, you ready? All right, let's see how tall these are. Let's see how tall these are, okay. That's pretty tall. Okay, next question. What's your favorite book slash movie slash show slash podcast? My favorite show right now is definitely Bel Air, okay? Because going off of what I was just talking about, dark skin, beautiful people up there, okay? With real stories, real drama, real all that. So Bel Air is definitely like, my top five okay the storyline is so good and it's not too crazy up there like there's definitely some shows there's definitely some shows that i have to be like oh i can't watch that i can't watch it it's convicted me i gotta turn it off and i'll be like oh man it's good but it's doing too much i can watch bel-air over and over it's so good as far as books there's a book that i just read that is called the one who Sees Me? Is that the one I read? The One Who Sees Me or The One Who Knows Me? Let me see. The one I read was The One Who Loves Me. So if you're someone who's like really into romance, but you want like Christian romance, Joan and Bola, I believe her name is. I'll link the book for you actually. And then my honorary favorite movie will honestly always be Titanic. That is the movie that made me fall in love with acting and film and all of that. I was seven years old when I saw it and also my, my man, <laughs> Leonardo DiCaprio. Um, so that will always be my honorary, honorary favorite movie. What kind of music do you like? I 
used to love like all genres of music and I still kind of do like I will listen to country music uh, of course Christian like gospel music but also even more so I've been getting into Christian R&B and Christian rap music I have some amazing artists okay I feel like you guys should check out. Maybe I should do like a whole like Spotify playlist for y'all, but I have some really good people that I think y'all would love. Um, and then like I also do listen to R&B, but I filter a lot of the music that I listen to. I don't listen to 98% of the artists that I used to off of just straight up conviction. Like I, it's just some people, I just can't listen to them anymore. Womp womp womp. But um... They just be doing too much. But I will say, just because, you know, it's not technically gospel doesn't necessarily mean it's bad, but you have to make sure that you're listening to the conviction and you're, you have to make sure too that you're not listening to anything crazy, okay? Okay, next question. Do you prefer the outdoors or the indoors? So, right, now let me add in my baby breath and then we're going to fix it up more i would say that i like a mix of both um i'm definitely in my head i'm a cowgirl <laughs> in my head i really am a cowgirl guys i don't care what anybody tells me in my head i go to rodeos in my head i wear a cowboy hat like that's me in my head but in real life i'm like i look like i'm the opposite i had someone tell me like i was talking to a group of people and they had brought up, yeah, because you want your farm one day. And someone was like, you want to have a farm? I thought you wanted a production company. And I was like, yeah, I felt like I was like making it up. Or I'm like, oh yeah, I want both. And they were so confused by that. Like, how do you want both? And guys, I that's why I'm saying in the beginning of where you feel like there's so many different sides of yourself. And it's like those sides don't even match each other, but you just enjoy it. I can't explain it. So when I say I like the indoors, but I also love the outdoors and that just is what it is. Like what's understood don't need to be explained. There's always been a girly side to me, but there's also like a, like a little rip side, a little rip. Okay, I'm from the country, okay. I'm thinking maybe these should be shorter. So now I'm just about to take some of these roses and move them around to kind of fill this out. I don't know, I like flowers that are cohesive. Like I don't like doing things that are too outside of the box because it just confuses, like it messes with me. I like to do things that are cohesive, that are similar, that like kind of plain in a sense uh, because otherwise it's like sensory overload and I don't like that. What is the most hilarious thing that has ever happened to me on vacation <sighs> buckling it's about to be a wild ride so one year i have to stop the floor arrangement for this so one year i went to jamaica with my family at this beautiful beautiful resort in the lobby there's an elevator and then there's also this long flight of stairs a lot of people don't really get on the elevator because it's very very small and once you just hit those stairs, you're there to your destination. But the group that I was with, we all decided to take the elevator. Mind you, the elevator max was 10 people, right? The group that was with us, that I was with, all together made up 10 people. The women that I was with are more on the beautiful curvy side we we probably went over the max weight so we all packed into that little elevator like sardines we're all very close together but we're like oh we're only going one floor we're going up so it's fine it's just one floor up we'll be good as the elevator doors are closing i see a fellow jamaican gentleman walk by and me and him made eye contact and i it was like a movie you ever See the movies where before something happens, like the main character and someone else like makes eye contact and it's just like a moment of like, wait, should I be doing this type of thing? That's what happened to me. He walks by and me and him make eye contact. And it's like everything is going in slow motion. He's like slowly walking by and the doors, the elevator door, doors are closing. So as soon as that happened, I don't know if it was the prophetic in me <laughs> or, or what, Listen, I don't even think it took the prophetic to know that we all should not have been packed on that elevator like that. The doors close 
and the elevator's doing what it's trying to do because mind you we're trying to go up so the elevator starts going up and as it's going up a few inches it goes boom it's just it drops and we're all like whoa but we're thinking like okay like maybe <laughs> Maybe it's just having a little malfunction, but it's trying to take, it's trying so hard to pull us up. And it goes boom, boom, and it just keeps falling, y'all. It keeps falling. I think, I felt like it was falling for a good two minutes. It felt like it was falling. And you might think, it's only two floors, so how deep down can we go? Mind you, it never really truly got up off of the floor that we were on. And so we were on like the, what, like the base level floor. So now y'all, we're falling, we're falling into a hole in the ground. So it kept falling, it's like boom, boom. Every time it falls, it makes this loud, like boom noise, like boom. Like you hear the elevator, you hear the elevator falling. And we're all like, oh. Y'all, it wasn't funny at the time. That's why this really, like, I'm saying this is one of the funniest, uh, most hilarious thing that's ever happened to me on vacation. It wasn't funny at the time. I was very, we were all scared, okay? So it finally stops falling. And so we're like, wait, well, then where are we? Because there was only two levels and we were trying to go up. And there's nothing below the level we were already on. So we realized, so my mom, she like, slides open the elevator the door and as she slides to try to see if we can get out she slides it open she's like y'all it's a wall <laughs> i'm sorry and the way every some people just started like flipping out a little bit it's the way she said it she was so because my mom in those type of situations that's why i didn't why everybody was like whoa that would that would have normally been me because i'm very dramatic but y'all Y'all don't know my mama. She's very, very calm in situations like that. And I know if I were to start panicking in any kind of way, she was going to either look at me or shake me like that. So while everybody was panicking, I didn't even care what type of situation we was in. I was a G the whole time. I was like, I was acting like it won't face me because I'm not about to get punched in this little elevator because I'm flipping out. So everybody, you know, there are certain people who are remaining calm. There are certain people who are flipping out a little bit. My cousin that was with me, see, she didn't get the memo. So she starts panicking. She's like, ah, 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 ah. And my mom looked at her. It was like, calm down. And I looked back like, girl, I, I told you, you better, better calm down, girl. My mama don't like all that hoopla when she's in a, a serious situation. And so my cousin calms down. And then, like, it's like one by one, everybody, like, kind of flipping out a little bit. Not me, though. Not me. Okay. So I'm just like. So it was still kind of dropping. We didn't know how deep the hole was going. So we didn't know if we were technically like still suspended or had we fully hit the bottom, like in the hole on the ground type situation. So that was the part that was really scary because we didn't know how deep down that hole went, if that makes any sense. So we know that when we tried to like pry the doors open, there was a wall. So we're, 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 we're underground, right? We just don't know how far down this ground goes. We tried to call the Jamaica police. Uh, we, we didn't have any signal, but I think we finally got in contact with them. And then at the same time, we pressed the little like alarm button on the elevator and we couldn't hear a thing because we're practically underground at this point. So apparently the sirens was like going off across the resort or whatever the case may be. And so we finally hear some voices above our Jamaican voices. They were like, how many of it are y'all? And we were like, 10. And they were like, why? We were like, 10, it's 10 of us. And they had a piece of like plywood and they start cranking us, mind you. It's heavy, like they're, they're having to lift us and the elevator. So they're like trying to like crank us up somehow, some way. I, I still don't know to this day how they did it. So we finally, the elevator starts lifting. So we're like, thank God we're getting out of the hole. But as it's lifting, it starts to fall again. <laughs> so as they're lifting us, it, it'll start lifting and then boom, it'll fall. And then it start lifting, then boom, it'll fall. Finally, I think they got us in a very steady 
position and I saw this Jamaican man. <laughs> I saw this Jamaican man with a piece of wood and he's like pushing open the elevator doors and if he can only open it this much much because at this point the elevator is like done. Like it's not working. Mind you, it was hot as ever up there. I literally could not breathe. Like we were all packed in and there was like no air, no oxygen. So he cracks open like the elevator a little bit to where I could see one little, his one little eyeball. And I mind you, I'm at the very front. So we make eye contact and I'm just like, I don't know about everybody else. But as soon as I could get through that little space, I'm out of here, okay, before this thing fall. Cause I'm, but I'm like, look, as soon as I see even an inch more, I'm taking it. And then I'm gonna come back and help my family in, in any way that I can. I contact, I'm like, I'm locked in. He opens that thing a little bit more. Y'all, I'm telling you, I took it. I don't know if he reached his hand out or what, I slid through that thing so fast and finally the door is just open. And yes, everybody, okay, mind you, I was so calm the whole time, but because everybody saw me when I got out, I let a tear, a little thug tear roll down my cheek. Everybody was like, oh my gosh, Najee, are you okay? Not, not the one, y'all was just up there flipping out. Now y'all see a little tear, y'all trying to act, oh my God, are you okay? Y'all trying to act like I'm being a little dramatic or whatever. No, y'all the ones that was about to flip out up there. Not me. I kept my peace, okay? I kept my peace. And I was praying the whole time. Um, yeah. And then they, like, offered us some towels and whatnot and whatnot and whatnot. And, yeah. That was not technically the funniest thing. But looking back on it, it was kind of funny. But it was crazy. So, that happened. That happened. All right. Next question. What is your hidden talent? Okay, so I would say my hidden talent is that I know the 50 states of America in alphabetical order. Yes, and that is a talent. Um, it's been embedded in me since a kid. So if there was ever a competition of like, who knows how to say the 50 states in alphabetical order? Sign me up and I'm winning, okay? Uh, I can give y'all a quick, quick little 10 second snippet, okay? You ready? <clears throat> All right, let's go. Alabama, Alaska, Arizona, Arkansas, California, Colorado, Connecticut, Delaware, Florida, Georgia, Hawaii, Idaho, Illinois, Indiana. I will be able to quote that thing for the rest of my life. So, um, yeah, if you want to know more, if you want to hear more, then you're going to have to pay me. But, um, yeah, that's definitely my hidden talent because who you know know how to do that? I'll wait. Who do you know that knows how to do, quote, the 50 states of America in alphabetical order? Who do you know? You don't. I'm sorry. You only know me. Um, fun little fact. I feel like I'm cramping it. The baby breath. Ah, crap. Okay. Maybe I don't need to add in all of it. See, this is a lot. Whoever made this one, or whoever made, God made this one. <laughs> but this little stem has so much on it. Okay, okay. That looked a little better. Let's just like hit it, hit it real quick. Or let's do four more questions. Okay, what is your family like? My family is a very big family, a very loving family. Anyone who meets us will say that our family is full of love and will love you as if you are our own. Um, so if you ever are around our family, we're usually singing, eating, laughing, or playing games. Uh, we love like game nights and stuff like that and we just love each other and just hanging out with each other So yeah, I have a, a really huge big family and we're super loud and fun. Next question. Where did you grow up? I grew up in a small town in North Carolina and At the time I did not appreciate where I grew up. I hated being from a small town. I hated being from the country I hated being from the south and now I'm definitely like What's the guy from, um, what's the guy from that show All-American that 
people be like, he always mentioning how he's from Crenshaw or something like that. Like, I'm from Crenshaw, all that. Now I'm definitely the girl that will mention in like the first 10 minutes, oh yeah, I'm from the South. Like, yeah, like I grew up in the country. Like, I'm a country girl. Like, I, that definitely has become my personality now. So it's so funny how before that was something I didn't like and now it's just a big part of who I am. And I definitely think it's made me who I am being from the South. Uh, but yeah, small town in North Carolina. What brings you joy? What brings me joy is my relationship with God. Um, anytime I'm feeling down or whatever the case, he's always there and he'll never leave me. He'll never forsake me. And so he's definitely the top thing that brings me or that he's definitely the top person that brings me joy. And also you guys, you guys bring me a lot of joy. I love talking to y'all. Um, even on my Bible study, if you guys didn't know, I have a ministry and we host Bible study every single month. If you would like to join, girl, send me a direct message and I will get back to you. Um, so yeah, doing my Bible studies every month, talking to you guys, doing content creation, all of that brings me a whole lot of joy. Am I an introvert or an extrovert? And I definitely think I come across as an extrovert type of person. But if I'm being honest, I'm more of an introvert. I love, I don't necessarily love being alone, but I do appreciate my me time. I do appreciate the time that I do have by myself. And I'm not the type of person, I wish I was, but I'm not really the type that'll like come up and like talk to you first. I really do wish I was that kind of person, but I'm really not. Um, maybe as time progresses and the older I get, you know, but I am most definitely more on the introverted side. But as you guys can see, there's parts of me that is really, really extroverted. Uh, but I feel like it comes after you get to know me a little bit. I don't think I'm just like off the bat extroverted. I try to, I am sometimes, it's in there. But I would call myself more of an introvert for sure. And we not wasting no roses, all right? Cause we paid money for these, so let's figure out where they need to go. Cause we ain't wasting. Okay. I am all done. Let's see what that looks like. See right here, I feel like there needs to be a rose. Okay, I don't know how it looks on the camera. Okay y'all, that is the end. Bring her closer to me. Okay y'all, that is the end of today's video. I really hope you guys got to know me a little bit more and do you guys like it? I think it's super cute. I mean, I think it's really cute for like the spring slash summer, like fresh. So yeah, I'm definitely still a beginner at this, but hey, there's nothing wrong with being a beginner, especially at a new hobby. So don't even take yourself so seriously where you feel like you have to be absolutely perfect, but I think it's really pretty. So that's all that matters. So thank you guys so much for watching this week's video. If you guys have not already, please, hit the subscribe button down below, join the family, and like this video if you liked it. Follow me on all my social media platforms. I'm gonna link them down below as well. And yeah, that's the end of the video and I will see you guys next time. Bye.